welcome back to another video. So today I have a colored pencil review for you. Inside this box I have the Derwent Chromaflow 72 set of colored pencils. Derwent was kind enough to send these to me so that I could share them with all of you. So today in this video we are going to unbox these together. You all know how much I love to wait and just unbox all of my colored pencils when I'm reviewing them in the video so this way y'all could see the packaging and how they come to you. So we are going to unbox these. We are going to swatch them, test them in the pencil sharpener as I do with all of my reviews. Then towards the last portion of the video we are going to do a blend test so that we can see how well these pencils perform. If you check the description box down below you will find links down there to my Facebook group, my Etsy shop, and my Patreon if you'd like to support me there. I now also do have have channel membership if you would like more information on that you could hit the join button down below okay so they came very nicely shipped in the bubble wrap they were actually in another box and I had initially taken them out of that box but I wanted you to see the packaging of the actual pencils so we're gonna go ahead and open these take them out of the box Look how pretty that packaging is. They've got that beautiful parrot on there. Oh, I just love this. So let's go ahead and just take a look at the packaging first. It just says Derwent Chroma Flow, vibrant blendable color with a smooth lay down, professional quality. Then over here it says 72 pencils. So let's go ahead and just pop the lid off. And then when we turn it over, this is what the inside of the tin is going to look like. It just tells a little bit here about the company. And we've got wrapping here, so we need to take that off so we can take a look at these pencils. The pencils come stored in these little silver plastic trays, and you could just pull them right out with your fingers just like that. So we get one tray and then two trays. And then this one here is the last tray. So let me just go ahead and hold these up a little bit closer so you could see the actual colors inside the trays. So that's the first tray. This is the colors in the second tray. And of course we are gonna go through and we're gonna sharpen all of these. They do come out pretty easily. And here is the third tray. So yeah, they do come out pretty easily with these little spaces here on the silver plastic tray so you could just pull them up and out. And then I think this is just, yeah, that's just a piece of cardboard that's in there, I guess, to elevate the pencils. So let's just go ahead and pull one of these so we could take a closer look at the pencil. So it just says here, made in Britain, and then Derwent Chroma Flow. Over here it has the color name, and it looks like a color number. And then just as with all of the other Derwent pencils, we do have the color dip tip, and then we've got the gold ring here. They are completely covered all the way around, so you cannot see the core but they do have 3.5 millimeter cores and they are a wax based pencil. So they do also have the black barrels and they have the silver writing which stands really nicely off of that black barrel. You can clearly see everything on the pencil which I really, really love. You can clearly see the color name, you can see the number, and everything over here is written in capital letters which does make it much easier to be able to see. Here is what the tip of the pencil looks like when it comes to you. So they do have the flatter tip on the pencils for a little extra added protection in shipping. And of course we're going to go through and we are going to sharpen every one of these pencils before we do the swatching so that we could see all the gorgeous colors. If you watch this whole entire video and you decide that you would like to purchase these, I'm going to go ahead and go over all of the pricing information and the availability where you could purchase them. And I'm going to also have links down in the description box below. I did back in 2021 when they first released just the 12 set and the 24 set. I did actually review these, but I wanted to redo the entire review. I figure it's easier just for everybody to watch one review and not two, but I just wanted to show you the colors here that do come in the 24 set and it is the same idea the tin does look exactly the same you still get the little finger spaces here to be able to pull the trays out you get two trays and these are the colors that you get in that set so the newer set is just going to be additional colors from what you get in this set but back then when they were first released you can only get them in a 12 set and a 24 set 
Now you can get them in a 36 set, a 48 set, and a 72 set as well. So if you were to order this 72 set on Blick, you would get it for $134.97 as of the filming of this video. Today is September 5th, 2022. And if you just wanted to try them out, you might want to grab yourself just the 12 set or even the 24 set that I just showed you. The 12 set is $15.91 and the 24 set set is $32.90. You could also get the 36 set for $49.22 and the 48 set of pencils for $55.49. Now I believe Amazon's pricing is going to be right about the same. You can purchase the 72 set which is this set for $134.97, which is the exact same price as you would purchase it on Blick. The 48 set is $55.49. The 36 set is actually a little bit cheaper on Amazon because it is $46.87, so you're saving right around $3. The 24 set is also just a little bit cheaper at $32.74. And the 12 pack you can get for $20.00. Three cents. I would suggest if you just want to get the 12 pack and you just want to try them out, I would suggest going to Blick to purchase those because they are far cheaper on Blick at $15.91. So if you've watched my reviews before, you know that I always like to test the pencils in the pencil sharpener. I have my Doll 133 and my Jarlink. These are both my absolute favorite pencil sharpeners. This one is an electric sharpener. It is a fantastic sharpener and it works on most all pencils. And this is the Doll 133. This is a crank sharpener, so you turn the lever on this one. And I use this one because this really helps me determine the quality of the wood on the pencils, whether it is much softer or much harder. If I were to put something like a Prismacolor in here, it's going to be very, very easy to turn this lever. But if I put something such as a Crayola in here, then it is going to be much more difficult and if you are sharpening something like a Crayola or even sharpening the whole entire set, you are going to want yourself something like a Jarlink. And I also suggest this Jarlink pencil sharpener for those of you that have any kind of hand pain. When I was experiencing a lot of hand pain, I was so excited that this company reached out to me and wanted me to test it because I was looking for an electric pencil sharpener, but I was still at the same time very scared of using an electric pencil sharpener, especially on my Prismacolors or my very expensive artist grade sets of pencils. But if you leave it on three, it works very, very well all of the time. And I will always have both of these pencil sharpeners linked down in the description box below so that you can easily find them. We are going to pull out one of the colors here and we are going to test it on the doll first. So I'm just going to pull this out. You push the little button in and then put your pencil in. It went in there very, very nicely. And now I am just going to sharpen it. And it was actually very easy to sharpen and when it's done being sharpened, you will be able to feel it with the doll because it sort of has a release mechanism and it just gets a lot lighter and you could feel when it stops sharpening. And then you just push this, it goes back in and you pull your pencil out. But this is what the lead looks like on the doll. It was fairly easy to sharpen, not as easy as if I were to put a Prismacolor in there, but it was still very easy to turn the lever. And I'm going to try it out on a different color. This color was hot pink. Pinks usually have red in them, and anything that has red in it to me is usually a little bit easier to sharpen, and even when I'm using my colors that have red in them, they always feel just a little bit waxier or a little bit softer. So we're gonna try something over here in this tray. I have a blue. This one is periwinkle, so like a bluish purple color. And we're gonna try this one in here and see if it's the same. And it does feel very much the same. And there is our lead. Look how beautiful that nice sharp tip is. And I always recommend sharpening your pencils before you use them because when your pencils come to you initially, let me go ahead and show you this here, but earlier when I showed you the pencils and we took a closer look at the pencils, you can see that the pencil is always going to have that flatter 
tip on it. At least the pencils that are Derwent or like your Prismacolors or any of the better pencils. That is not always the case when they come from Amazon and it's a budget set, but this one does come with the flattened tip on it and most pencils are going to have a wax finish over the lead of the pencil. You just want to make sure that you sharpen your pencil to make sure that you remove the wax film that is covering the lead of the pencil because you don't want to color and get any scratchiness from any of your colored pencils. Usually if I get any scratchiness from a colored pencil, it is usually because I have not given the pencil a thorough sharpen. So we are going to try it now on the jar link and I'm only testing it on the jar link just because I love for all of you to see how wonderful this pencil sharpener is and it does actually auto stop when you put your pencils in there and it auto stops in a really good place to give us the perfect lead that matches up almost exact to the doll 133. So this is mango and we are just going to slide this in here and then we are gonna put just a little bit of pressure on this. Now, I very recently had a post in my Facebook group where someone had posted that they were not very happy with this pencil sharpener. I believe it was because she was pushing too hard on the pencil when she was putting it in here. Now, you just need to push the pencil down far enough to trigger it to start working. Don't ever shove your pencil in there and put a whole lot of pressure behind it because you may not be happy with the outcome. So very little pressure and it stops. And so we're gonna pull it out and this is what the lead looks like. Now let me go ahead and compare it to the one that was in the doll. And they are a little bit different. The one with the doll may be a little bit sharper, but if you wanted a sharper lead with the jar link, you could just change the little dial down here at the bottom. I prefer it on three. I think that it takes too long to stop when it's on two. So let's do a little experiment and I'm gonna put this on two and we're gonna see what the difference is. It was this yellow one. Yeah, the mango that I sharpened in there. So we're gonna take another one out of here. I'm gonna have to go through and sharpen them all anyway. So we're gonna go ahead and do this and see what happens when we have it on two. So you can see here that I did put it on two and so we are just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna slide the pencil in here and I'm going to barely push it in there. And there is the lead I got on two. Let's go ahead and compare it to the other one. And you could see that it did sharpen just a little bit more. So even on two, it may perform the way that you want it to. And remember, if I were to leave it on three and I were to really push that pencil down in there, it is going to sharpen it for longer. So make sure when you put your pencil in here that you just don't shove it down in there because I think that is the issue that some people were having. You don't have to put any pressure behind your pencil. You just put it in there and you wait till it triggers it, let it sharpen it, and then it will auto stop where it's supposed to. So I've sharpened all my pencils and I've got nice, beautiful, sharp leads. This is my swatch chart for a 72 set of colored pencils available in my Etsy shop. I will always have it linked down in the description box below so that you can easily find it. It is also available in 120. It does have space for the name and the number. In this case, just to save time, I didn't put the numbers, but I did put all of the names down here in the order that they are in the tin. All of my swatch charts do have the bigger boxes. This 72 chart is available where it's divided into three sections because when I swatch my pencils, I like to make a gradient here of light, medium, and dark because I like to see the difference in the values of the color that come from each pencil. I did make a swatch chart also just for the 72 set where you would have little lines in here to help you to separate the different values of each one of your colored pencils. So we're going to go ahead and swatch these and I'm going to speed it up to music while I do that so y'all could just see all of the colors come together as a whole. Then after I'm done swatching them, I'm going to come back and we are going to do a review of the colors that are included in this set.
are all swatched out now and there's some gorgeous colors in this set. I do want to talk a little bit about my experience with these pencils as I was sharpening them to get them ready to swatch as well as my swatching experience. I did save a couple of the leads over here that did fall off of the pencils. So the pencils that I had an issue with in the pencil sharpener were this one here. You can tell by how much shorter they are. So this was citrus yellow. I also had an issue with sunflower and I believe it was the sunflower that actually broke in the pencil sharpener. I noticed that there were a lot of shavings in the pencil sharpener so I did empty it out and put the top back on and then I resharpened the pencil and after I did that there were no issues and it sharpened beautifully and it wasn't an issue throughout the entire core. It was just initially and it may have been the pencil sharpener. Then, if you saw, as I was swatching the colors, I believe it was the obsidian green, which is right over here. A little piece of it is still left over, but the obsidian green, and then there was one of the grays. I don't remember which one it is, but here's the lead that broke off. You could probably see it if you were watching closely in the swatching, but I only had an issue with five of the pencils out of the whole 72. And as far as the pencils being crumbly, there are a couple little tiny crumbs you could see on my swatch chart, but there aren't too many at all. They're not really a very crumbly pencil. They are a softer pencil, but they are not nearly as soft as a Prismacolor. And when I did have the breakages of my pencils, it did happen when I went in and applied very hard pressure. Because if you look at my swatches, I like to have a light medium and dark swatch because I like to see all of the values of the color that can come from each individual pencil. So when I used more pressure to get the darkest value of the color down onto the swatch chart, that is when I experience the breakages. So if you're heavy handed, you may want to be a little bit careful with these. And not to say that that is a bad thing because I experienced the same thing with my Prismacolor. So that is just a little something to make note of. But when I was applying the colors, they all applied very, very nicely. There was no scratchiness in any of the pencils. I absolutely loved the lay down of the pencils. They were very, very nice to work with. They sharpened beautifully in the pencil sharpener. And you can see that the colors in this set are absolutely beautiful. And I do want to mention if my swatch chart looks a little bit off. <laughs> it's because when I got down here to the white one, first of all, my white shouldn't be there. I should have put my white up there. Y'all know how I am about color family order, and I usually always put my white first, but I was not redoing this again <laughs> because I had already redone it two times, and I wasn't doing that again. So I just took a little piece of Spring Hill paper, and I got some glue, and I just put it right over there because I accidentally wrote white on the inside <laughs> of the swatch box instead of down here. How many of you have ever done that? It just upset me so much <laughs> because I had already done this so many times and I just did not want to do it over again. And so that is how I remedied it. I just cut a little piece of the Spring Hill paper and I glued it and put it right on top of the box. And the color is white anyway, so it doesn't matter. We don't really need to swatch white. <laughs> so before I review all of these colors, I do want to say the one thing I'm totally excited about is we have a light blue. <laughs> it is so hard to find light blue in colored pencil sets and this is only a set of 72 and they gave us this gorgeous color down here called Glacier Blue. I am so excited about that. <laughs> so let's go ahead and look at some of these colors. So we start here with this gorgeous color that is called Parmesan and it's more like a cream color. Then we move into our yellows. We do get three yellows. They're very beautiful, bright, and vibrant. Here we have amber gold, which is a yellowish orange. Absolutely beautiful. We get another yellowish orange over here. And then here we get a color that has a little bit more brown in it. It's called Golden Sun. It looks sort of like maybe a pumpkin-y orange. It's really pretty. We get this gorgeous bright melon color over here. That color is just beautiful. I love bright, vibrant colors. That would look just beautiful blended into this flame. Flame is just a beautiful, basic orange color. Then we have Autumn Blaze, 
which is definitely autumn-y looking. We have a red-orange, which is a darker shade of orange, and then we get into our reds. So we have a couple reds here. This one's much brighter and vibrant, and this one is darker. This scarlet is a gorgeous red. And then we have strawberry. It's more of like a brownish red. And then we have pompian red. I'm not even sure I'm saying that right. I think that's right. But that's another gorgeous red. So we get quite a few reds. One, two, three, four reds. Then we have this gorgeous salmon color, which is a very pale, pale pink. That is just beautiful. And then we have this over here, which is called blush pink. And then a hot pink. Then we get into our purpley pinks here and we have three of them. We have this gorgeous orchid color here and then the pink heather, these two would be beautiful blended into one another. We have a couple of purples here. Here's another purple. So we get three purples, four purples. Wow, that's a lot of purples for a 72 set. And then this is sort of a bluish purple, the violet blue. We get denim and lapis blue. We do get quite a few blues. And look at all these different gorgeous shades of blues before we get into the greens. And as I said, I'm very excited about this glacier blue. That's a gorgeous color. And this deep blue is sort of like an indigo. It's gorgeous. And then we get into our blues that are more of our aqua or teal tones. We have one here, one here, and then we get our actual teal here that has a lot more green in it as we move into our greens. We get another turquoise green here, which is a pale, pale turquoise green, and then this eucalyptus, which is a darker shade of that one. We get a beautiful pastel mint. That color is gorgeous. It looks sort of like the sage green in the Prismacolor set. And then this color called cactus looks a little bit like maybe Kelly green or Celadon green in the Prismacolor set. And then we get this gorgeous dark, dark green. You've got a lot of really pretty greens here. So you get pear, pastel mint, green grass, green meadow, and they could all be used as your highlight color when you're coloring leaves in Johanna Basford's books. Those are absolutely beautiful. Then we get over here also this lemon lime, which would also make a gorgeous highlight for leaves. Here's another greenish color called pickle. It's sort of like an olive green tone. It's really nice. Then we have this mocha here. We're getting into the shades of brown or the shades that have brown in them. We come down here and have some browns that have a lot more orange in them as we get down here even further and we've got some browns that have red in them and then we get a much darker brown this one's called coffee bean I love the names and then we get a natural brown here now we're getting into the colors that are grays we do get some warm grays and some cool grays and then we're going to come down here we've got this gorgeous color called red storm and this is like a reddish gray like a reddish purplish sort of lavender gray. It's really pretty. It's kind of hard to explain. I look at it and I see so many different colors in it. And then we get this color called lavender ash and this one is the same idea as that one. This just looks like it's a darker tone of this color. Then a slate gray. This platinum is really really beautiful and going down on the paper it was so nice and soft. The platinum and the silver both were like that. And then the black is not a very dark dark true true black. It is a little bit more on the lighter side for a black, kind of like a dark charcoal gray, but it is a very pretty black. And then you get a gold. So I'm really excited that even though only being a 72 set of colored pencils, you get a silver and a gold, and then you get this gorgeous platinum color over here. It almost looks shiny, but we really do get a really nice array of colors in this set, being that it's only a 72 set, and who knows, maybe they will come out with a 120 set in the near future. They have already expanded it, so I'm assuming they must have been pretty popular and there was a demand for it, so they did add the extra set and so now we've got up to 72 which is really really great because you could do a whole lot with 72 colors so hopefully in the future we'll see 120 set so now it's time to go ahead and do the blend test and see how these pencils perform and I've decided that I want to go with blues and so we need to choose three blues that are gonna go really well together y'all know how much I love this glacier blue so I think I'm gonna start with the glacier blue as my highlight and then maybe go into the blue 
and then the lapis blue. I think those will be really pretty together. So I have my three colors. Again, they are lapis blue, blue, and glacier blue. And we're gonna try to get a really nice blend of these. We're gonna see how many layers we can get down here on the paper and what the transitions look like between each one of the colors here on the Spring Hill paper. So let me go ahead and lay down the lapis blue first. Then I have the blue. And now I have the glacier blue. Now I'm coming back with my darkest color and I'm gonna lay a second layer down. And so far they're laying down really nicely. There's no scratchiness or anything and they're blending very well. I'm gonna start here at the transition and come back with a second layer of my mid-tone. And then I am going to grab my glacier blue and we are going to blend that there at the transition line and come down all the way to the bottom. Okay, so this is layer number three, and we're gonna go the other direction now to try to cover some of that white of the paper. I'm still going rather lightly. I'm not using hard pressure. Now I'm gonna come back with my mid-tone for the third layer. I'm trying to remind myself when I lay the layers down, repeat myself the third layer, the fourth layer, <laughs> because I always lose count. Okay, so now we're gonna come back the other direction for the fourth layer. I'm just going to go in a circular motion and pull down into that transition area into the mid-tone. Now a fourth layer of the mid-tone. And these really do have a seamless transition. Hopefully you can see that on camera. And now we're going to go back the other direction and this is layer number five. And now that I've got five layers down on the paper, the color in the pencil is starting to move around quite a bit more. Now we're gonna come back with layer number six. So this is seven. I still don't have all the white of the paper covered with the six layers, and it doesn't look like seven is covering them either. And we're still able to go back again. This is layer number eight. But we have definitely covered quite a bit of the white of the paper, and that was eight layers. We could probably come back and lay down more, but I do want to do a test where I try to blend some colors that are from different color families. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now and see how many layers we can get down and see if they get the same seamless transition. I'm gonna hold this up closer to the camera so that y'all can see the transition and you can tell me exactly what you think. But I think the transition is pretty seamless and it looks really nice. It would probably look even nicer if we grabbed a blender pencil and we went over it again. Let's go ahead and pick some reds and oranges. Those are always the most fun when I'm trying to use different color families. And I would love to see that if the colors that have some red in them lay down any differently than the colors that have blue in them. Because sometimes, like I said, I find that my red colored pencils lay down a little bit differently, like a little bit waxier, a little bit softer. So I think we're gonna go from a red to an orange to a yellow. And so we're gonna use Pompeian Red into Red Orange and then Sunflower to really test this out. So I have my colors and we're gonna lay them down the same way that we laid down the blue from the darkest to the lightest. So let's lay down this pumpkin red. Then I have the red orange. We're gonna start up here at the transition and blend that right in there and pull it down. Do the same with the sunflower. Oh gosh, this color is gorgeous. <laughs> Look at that. Oh my gosh, that's so beautiful, bright and vibrant. Let's come back with a second layer of the pumpkin red and a second layer of the red orange. Look at that color just going right down. But now I have sunflower. So this is our third layer. So like I did with the other one, we're gonna come back and go the other direction. This color is just going down so beautifully, like better than the blues. And then this is layer number four. Now layer number five, the other direction, and we're really starting to cover some of the white of the paper. And these feel super soft. Let's see how well we can get that transition there on this fifth layer. And I'm pulling up as I come down into that lightest color. Then I'm coming back with my lightest color. Look at that color lay down there though. Look how bright that is getting. That's a gorgeous color. Okay, so number six. <laughs> The 
tr transitions are pretty much what I would expect from different color families, especially where the orange meets the yellow. Let's come back and lay another layer here. And again, with these, the color is moving around a little bit more. Now that I've got all that color down on the paper, it's extremely movable. I think more movable with these colors than it was with the blues. I think we have nine or 10 layers down there, and we still have white of the paper left up here in the darkest color and the midtone, probably the lightest color too, but we got a good amount of layers down there, and that was using pretty light pressure in all of the first layers. And then I started using a little bit harder pressure when I came towards the end, and a lot of the white of the paper seemed to be filled. And again, I could come back with both of these and lay more color down, but let's do one last and final test and let's see how they work with a blender. Now, I don't have the Derwent blender, but my favorite blender is the Caran d'Ache blender. I absolutely love this Caran d'Ache full blender. So I'm gonna go over both of these with a blender and we're gonna see how much we can get rid of the little bit that's showing here in this transition, especially over here on this one. Let me go ahead and hold this closer to the camera first. So this way you could see the before and then I'll hold it up there again after I use the blender pencil. But you can see that there is a little bit of a harsher transition here between the orange and the yellow because they're different color families and that's usually what I expect when I'm blending together an orange with a yellow. This one seems to be a little bit more seamless at that transition, but we're gonna see what happens when we use a blender pencil here. So I'm gonna start at the lightest and then I'm just going to move up and I'm gonna go over this transition area a couple times to really blend that out. And oh my goodness, what a fabulous job this blender does. This is like the best blender ever created. I have not found a better one. I do need to try the Derwent blenders and see if they are any better. But look at that now. Hopefully you saw how that just blended right out. Let's come over here and do the same thing on this blend. I'm gonna start at the lightest color and I'm really gonna go over this transition to get a really beautiful blend of those colors. You see how it's just creating another color, just beautiful. And then all the way up here to the top of the red. And I'm gonna go over that transition once more and come back down. And now you can see that they both have seamless blends at the transition lines. Aren't those colors gorgeous though? I absolutely love them. So my final thoughts as far as these pencils go are that they are really good pencils. When we tested them using the blend test here, they did a really good job. The transitions on the blue color blend was pretty seamless even before I used the blender pencil, but using the blender pencil did blend them even better. I mean, you can't even hardly see the transitions, but they perform really, really nicely. I didn't have any pencils that were scratchy. Like I said, when I was doing the blend test, the reds and oranges and yellows did feel a little bit softer to me than the blues. Even when I'm using my Prisma colors, I find the same with any reds, oranges, or yellows. And they seem to have much more wax filler in them for some reason, and they are much softer. And I have noticed much more breakage in my Prismacolors with reds, oranges, and yellows, more so than the other colors. As far as the colors that you get in this set, they give you a beautiful array of colors. I feel like you get a good amount of colors from every color family. Purples are really hard to get in colored pencil sets, especially smaller ones of 72 colors, as well as reds. And you've got in this set one, two, three, four, and then five. That is a purple also, it just has more blue in it. But you get five purples on this set, so it's not lacking in purples at all. And it's also not lacking on reds, because you've got all these reds here. And then you get some brownish reds down here at the bottom as well. So as far as the color choices, they are fantastic. And this glacier blue here, that just totally takes the cake for me. <laughs> Y'all know how I feel about that. And this salmon color up here, that is absolutely beautiful. 
but I absolutely love these colors. The Parmesan, that is gorgeous too. And you all know in all of my sets, I always have to have a cream color because I use that a lot of the time for my burnisher rather than using a white. I just love using that color. It's very, very versatile. Now, if you wanted to try out these pencils, go ahead and start out with a 12 or 24 set. In the beginning of the video, I did show you the set of 24 and the colors that come inside the tin in that set. You do get a good amount of colors in that set to be able to try them and you can purchase that set for a lot cheaper than purchasing the 72 set because I will tell you these pencils are not cheap pencils. They are on the more expensive side. They are more in the range of an artist grade pencil, but they do perform very nicely. Now, as far as the few that I experienced breakages with, I will say that I have the same issue with my Prismacolors and that is because they are a softer pencil. These are a softer pencil, but they are not as soft as a Prismacolor. And the ones that were broken, once I sharpened them, they were fine after that. So really it was just initially because I did go and use them after they were sharpened, I was able to use harder pressure. So it may have even happened in shipping. I really don't know, I don't have answers for that. But as far as the pencil set as a whole, for all of us collectors that love to have them all, and for those of you that love Derwent's line of pencils, y'all know how I'm obsessed with my ink tents. <laughs> This is a great set to add to your colored pencil collection. You really can't go wrong with the colors they're giving you in a 72 set. Hopefully in the future they will come out with a bigger set of maybe 120, which would be absolutely fantastic. But I will have links for everything that you've seen in this video down in the description box below. If you watched the pricing portion of the video, hopefully that will help you to decide where you would like to purchase your sets from, no matter which set you decide to go with. I will have timestamps on this video so that you can move around freely throughout the video and get to the certain sections you would like to rewatch if you're trying to decide whether or not these pencils are for you. I hope that this video was really helpful in helping you to decide whether or not you would like to add these to your collection. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Happy coloring, bye.